Hey everybody, I wanted to wrap up our discussion of magnetic fields and magnetic forces by showing you one cool effect when happen that happens when you have a charged particle in a perpendicular magnetic field, and that's called the cyclotron equation. So here's the scenario. Let's imagine we have a magnetic field that's pointing into the page. So I'm going to represent that by x's, and remember the arrow notation, and x means the arrow is going into the page, away from you. So that's my magnetic field, and I'll label it B because that's the variable we use for magnetic field. And let's imagine we have a positively charged particle, little q, so that's positive little q, and it's going to the right right here. So that's the direction of the velocity. The velocity is tending to the right. So everywhere where I'm not in this region with the x's, there's no magnetic field. And everywhere where I am in the region with the green axis, there is a magnetic field. So first of all, my blue particle is just dots, putzing along, going to the right, going to the right, going to the right. So once it enters the magnetic field, there will be a force from it. Let's use the right-hand rule to determine the direction of the force, let's say when the particle is right here when it first enters it. So I'm going to draw a little right hand. So here's my right hand, and I have the fingers pointing in the direction of the velocity, so my fingers are pointing to the right. Keep in mind that as my right fingers point to the right, I can rotate my wrist any way I want as long as my fingers are still pointing to the right. Um, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate my wrist so that my right fingers curl in the direction of the magnetic field, which in this case means my fingers are going to curl down into the page, and that leaves me with a thumbs up. So that means the direction of the magnetic force on the particle right here is upwards. Okay, perfect. So we have the particle moving to the right, but it's got a force upwards, and that means the particle is going to have velocity this way and force tangent to it, so that means the acceleration, which is related to the change of velocity, delta v, is going to be a little bit this way, so the particle is now going to be moving a little bit this way. And if I do my right hand rule again and draw another little right hand, my fingers are going to be pointing in the direction of the velocity once again. I don't know what my Apple Pencil just did there. My fingers are going to curl down into the page, and now my thumb's going to be pointing this way. So now the direction of the magnetic force is a little bit this way. So now the particle is going to be moving a little bit more this way. And if I just keep doing this analysis, drawing my little right hands and moving my particle around, what's the overall picture that you think we're going to get? What's the overall path of the particle? Pause for a second and think about it. If the path you came up with was a circle, you are right. What's going to happen is that every instant, the force acting on the particle is tangent to the velocity of the particle, and as we know, that's a, that's a hallmark of centripetal force and circular motion. So in other words, what we discovered is that the magnetic force, Fe, is the centripetal force, Fc, on the moving charged particle. So let's make use of that, and let's actually figure out how big the circle is in which the particle moves. So let's just do some math here. So we know the magnitude of the magnetic force, Fb, well, we know I can calculate that by the magnitude of the charge times the velocity cross product of the magnetic field. Um, because in this case, my velocity is always perpendicular to the magnetic field because the velocity is in the page. Uh, sorry, the velocity is on the page and the magnetic field is into the page. This is always just going to be magnitude QVB. And I know that centripetal force, Fc, can be calculated, if you don't remember, it's on your reference table, as mass times speed squared divided by the radius of the circle in which something is moving. So let me set this equation equal to that equation and do some manipulation. Uh, so I have QVB, charge times magnitude of velocity times magnetic field, equals mass times speed squared, or velocity magnitude of velocity squared over radius. Um, obviously, I have a velocity on both sides, so I'm just going to kill that term because I can reduce it. And now my ultimate expression is just, I can write it like this, QB equals MV over R. What we often tend to do is solve this expression 
for what's called the cyclotron radius. And cyclotron is a fancy name, but it basically means something. There goes my spelling issue. Guess what? This thing goes this backwards. So um, the cyclotron radius is the radius of the circle in which a charged particle moves in a magnetic field. And you guys can immediately solve that equation for r by multiplying both sides by r and dividing both sides by qb. And you get r equals mv over qb. And that's the cyclotron radius. OK, so that's how you figure out how big the circle is in which your particle moves. One interesting side note about this expression is please remember this reminds us that the acceleration of the particle, which is of course the magnetic force or the centripetal force over the mass, is going to be essentially the centripetal acceleration, which is V squared over R. This tells us that the particle only accelerates in a direction perpendicular to its motion, or in other words, the magnetic force doesn't speed the particle up or down. The magnetic force does no work. And the reason why is because work, of course, is equal to force dot displacement. And we know that our force is always going to be perpendicular to our displacement. So that means that no work is done on the particle. So there's no change in kinetic energy of the particle. So what the magnetic field does is it doesn't speed it up. We do have an acceleration, just like we found right here. So we do have a magnitude of acceleration, but that doesn't mean it's getting faster. Remember, acceleration can make something go faster or slower, but an acceleration can also make something change direction. And that's what the magnetic field does. The magnetic field does no work. It changes your direction, but it doesn't speed you up or slow you down. So that's our final topic in magnetism. And now you guys are going to have some problems to solve and your sub is going to have a solution set, which I want you to check whenever you're done. All right, see you later. Oh yeah, like, comment, and subscribe.